Mount Cook is the highest mountain in New Zealand at 3,744 meters. The first European known to see Mount Cook was Abel the Swan on the 13th of December 1642. It was named Mount Cook in 1851 by Captain John Lord Stokes to Anna Captain James Cook, who first surveyed and circumnavigated the islands of New Zealand in 1770. The first recorded European attempt on the summit was made by Irishman Reeve William S. Green, Swiss Emil Boss, and mountain guide Ulrich Kaufmann on the 2nd of March 1882. It's believed they got to within 50 meters of the summit. The first successful ascent was made on Christmas Day 1894 by New Zealanders Tom Fife, Jake Clark, and George Graham. In 1998, the name of the mountain was officially changed to a rocky Mount Cook. Although small when compared with global behemoths like Mount Everest, which is almost 2.5 times its height, Mount Cook is a technically challenging mountain. Its height and level of glaciation are truck climbers from all over the world. But its difficulty is often underestimated. The climb involves sustained glacier travel with rock and ice climbing and a 15 to 20 hour summit day. The level of difficulty can change dramatically depending on weather, snow and ice conditions. Hazards include huge crevasses, ice and rock falls, avalanches, as well as high precipitation levels in short weather cycles. Things can change really quickly. The climbing seasons run from November to February. Hardly a season goes by without at least one fatality. In late December 2014, German father and son Johann Wielener, 58, and Raphael Wielener, 27, from Bavaria, were in New Zealand to climb Mount Cook. They were experienced climbers. Originally, they wanted to go up the mountain alone. But when they met Mount Cook experienced Dr. Michael Bishop, age 53, from Sydney, Australia, they joined forces. They were well equipped and had provision for a day trip. They set out from Plato Hut and Uraki Mount Cook National Fork about 1.30 a.m. on the 29th of December 2014. The trio, who were roped together, intended to climb the mountain by the Linda Glacier route. They met the head of the mountain rescue there. He saw the men default and followed them with a client. However, illness and concerns about unsafe weather and snow conditions prompted the fair to turn back after just an hour. Johan, Raphael and Bishop were last seen at about 3.30 a.m. on the 29th of December near Teichelman's Corner in the Linda Glacier. They were reportedly moving up very slowly. They were due back from the mountain in the evening. The weather on the 29th of December was clear and well suited for climbing, but that there were plenty of hazards on the mountain, including avalanches, rock falls, and crevasses. The terrain is considered extremely difficult. In order to move forward 100 meters, Climbers often have to touch 400 meters to the side and zigzag their goal. Concerns were raised the following morning when the trio failed to return to Plato Hut as they had intended. The men seemed to be well equipped, although they didn't appear to be carrying emergency locator beacons. Morua, cell phone reception was poor on much of the mountain. A two helicopter search of the area followed. They flew above the terrain because it provided higher visibility. They were looking for anything out of the ordinary 
splashes of color, movement, anything that was unusual. If they were off and moving, the searchers would have seen them. The conditions were beautiful for searching. Shortly afterwards, bad weather hit the area hampering search efforts. There were dense clouds, storms gust with 100 km per hour and heavy rain and snowfall. More than 30 cm of snow fell at the plateau hut, where Johan, Raphael and Bishop had set out from on the 29th of December. The situation was grim. It was hoped that if they had survived the storm, they would have been spotted from the air. The three men's families advised that they were probably dead. The final helicopter sweep was happened on the 1st of January 2015 as it flew back to Christchurch with volunteers. A bag containing climbing equipment was spotted in the area where the climbers were last seen by a tourist flight on the 5th of January 2015. It was speculated that the climbing 40 had decided to discard the bag to reduce weight. The search was re-evaluated and more aerial searches were carried out in the coming days in an attempt to locate the climbers' bodies. But despite extensive aerial searches, the bodies of the three missing men were never found. It's still unknown what happened to the men, but it's believed that the three were likely to have died after being buried in an avalanche on the mountain. New Zealand mountains sponged above their weight in terms of technical challenges and ice and snow conditions compared to other mountains of the same altitudes and areas such as the European Alps. Climbers shouldn't make assumptions about a road or mountain due to its altitude and should not underestimate the hazards and difficulties upon encountered on the approach. Rockfall is highly prevalent in the southern Alps and is likely to get worse in the coming years due to climate change, particularly in Oraki Mount Cook National Park where glaciers are retreating rapidly. More than 230 people have died in Oraki Mount Cook National Park since the mountain was first climbed in 1894, 78 of them while climbing the peak. Raphael Violiner was a successful track and field athlete. His father, Johann Violiner, was a very experienced mountaineer. They were all very enthusiastic about sports. Johann's younger brother had an accident on Mont Blanc and has since been considered missing. Johann's daughter, Julia, who was one of the best runners and on top of that an excellent triathlete, died two and a half years later in Italy when she was hit by a truck during cycling training, leaving her mother alone. Michael Bishop loved mountains. He started climbing as a medical student some 30 years ago. He had attempted to reach the summit of Mount Cook twice before but was thwarted by bad weather each time. He had wanted to climb the mountain for years and kept a close eye on the weather in New Zealand as he looked for opportunities to make a third attempt. He saw such a chance through a Christmas and flew out with little notice. Bishop used to go out there with the right gear. He never went unprepared. One time he got caught in a big snowstorm and he had to make a snow cave. He did it and survived and came back with all his limbs and fingers. But on his third attempt, he didn't make it back. Thank you all so much for watching.